Okay, here we go. Hi, everyone. Um, I've been away for a while, I guess, for those that do watch some of my videos. And I finally came around um, to making this video that, to talk about something I've been really wanting to talk about. I think it's really important to talk about this. Um, I kind of struggle with how to simplify it and how to how to be able to transmit the magnitude of importance that it has. And so I thought about it so much that I never did get around to making a video. And I've been following this um, guy, uh, a, a guy named Ace um, from the States. And I thought he was interesting and uh, interesting. I thought he was charming and, and uh, happy-go-lucky and just, uh, you know, kind of uh, bold and brash in a fun way. And, um, because he was, he's visiting Argentina. And if you see his channel, he's been going through all of the countries in Latin America, um, exposing culture, talking about the things they do, um, revealing the street side of, of, of their culture. And I thought he was really cool because he was doing that. And when he got to Argentina, he went to Mar del Plata. And I was like, wow, you know, following him and seeing his... I grew up um, most of my childhood there. Um, and he was walking through all the areas that uh, I grew up in. And it was kind of strange, you know, to see a, a typical African-American of the hood, you know, real real American and um, in Mar del Plata of all places, you know. Uh, you know, and I watched him for a while and then I uh, took a break, I guess. I watch so much stuff on, on the internet. And after uh, a month, I think he was still in Argentina and he was back in Buenos Aires. And, um, you know, his first videos were about um, he he expressed that he was interested in seeing if there was any racism in Argentina. And I thought that was really cool because I hoped that he would um, he would he would ex he would talk about he would show how different the attitude of the Argentine culture is about races as people of different backgrounds of different religions of different ethnicities uh, socially and culturally how different the spirit is over there I'm sorry I'm I got a new software in my computer so I'm looking at three different faces at once and um, I hope it's not too strange. I'm trying to look at the camera like professionals, professionals, yeah, professionals do. Um, and I was, he, it seemed like he maybe was going to do that. And then when I caught up with him, he started laying in on on sort of the civil ideological movement of the United States and, and leading the West and all these, um, you know, the the way that America goes about uh, civil ideology. Um, and I thought it was really, I started getting angry actually. I started, and that's why I'm making this video because I kind of blew my, <laughs> blew my, um, blew the t blew my top, as they say, or however you say it. Um, because what I saw was that he was portraying and he was talking about Argentina as yet another place where racism is buried and not talked about and, and, and this dark history and stuff that sounds more like somebody from the States talking about all the things that got buried and were never talked about. And, you know, and um, I started analyzing and, and reacting and um, I got kind of mean and insulted him 
uh, on 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 his on his channel because it it pissed me off that he was portraying something and and not highlighting what is good about society in this in Argentina in this area. Uh, instead, he was exporting, and 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 through exporting, uh, I keep moving over. I gotta look at. I gotta look at this screen over here. Through exporting um, this I, this way of thinking uh, of about uh, races and modern societies in the West and how we are handling what we have what we have categorized and identified as problems as group grouping problems or problems to do with uh, with uh, urban um, and demographics uh, and, and gave it a whole understanding uh, labeled under uh, you know individual rights civil rights uh, of groups of people and of course my way of understanding the subject is very different because I I think in, in a, a logical structure of uh, a, a unified or a, a single a single uh, human um, humanist Gaia a biological way of of understanding human beings as a single entity as a, as a community <laughs> you should see what I'm seeing I have my cell phone up there and but it's upside down <laughs> it's because I, I need to get to camera and so I'm looking at myself with my head upside down and then I have these two monitors here and Anyways, this is kind of funny, but it's more entertaining. Um, and uh, you know, and I wanted to, I want to explain to him the harm that I believe he's doing. And of course, it's kind of a complicated pseudo intellectual thing that I, I and I just don't know. I, you know, the reason I'm making this video is because I, I'm, I'm, I want to try to put it into simple words. Without starting to sound luxury, uh, but it's kind of hard to avoid because it's almost like you're teaching uh, a new science, and it really isn't. It is the most intuitive way of uh, of uh, relating to ourselves as human beings, put to words. But unfortunately, now it's like we have to do all this correcting um, because I'll just start by saying. Um, as human beings, we are designed by evolution, by nature, uh, in our social dynamics as well. We have ways that we behave, you know, and we we create family and society, and and uh, and and yes, we do influence that a great deal because of our intel, our high logical analytical intelligence which, you know, is so ambitious and so precocious and so able to um, uh, invent things and, and really push the envelope of what even should be natural. And yet we adapt ourselves to our inventions and our way of organizing and systemizing society. And we think it's okay, you know, for, I mean, any animal or any person 5,000 years ago would, would think it's absurd to have so much uh, judicial power over the bonding between children and their parents or send them off to school somewhere for 10 years you know things that we have invented as a civilization uh, a way of uh, protecting our family that ends up encroaching on on the on the bond of parents because we deem that they're bad parents and all of a sudden the kids flying around foster homes and we have all these ways that we uh, are applying our analytical intelligence to the design of society and civilization that um, that really pushes hard, but we go along with it because we are very resilient and adaptive, and we convince ourselves we we don't see the the vastness of our of, of amounts of mistakes that we make uh, and harm ourselves. We just continue. Um, polluting our air and eating toxic food and drugs and ingested into our systems and uh, disfiguring our our genes for the our DNA for the future and we just keep going. Um, and 
civil ideology, the ideology that has been messing with social structure is no different to this. And how I explain that is, how we can understand it is by um, understanding that we have a reference that is already wired, it's already designed by you know, millennia of, of existing socially a certain way. Um, and and that, as in, at the base, at the source, fundamental source of that collective design of the species, we are the only single human living form aware that we are that. <laughs> we are human beings and we know there's nothing like us on the world. We have a total awareness of us and the rest of the world and all the animals um and so that is that um awareness of what we are as a as a collective organism as a, as a species is super strong it's like the reference starting uh point of anything that we will later uh articulate as a society as in in so far as inventing or organizing, coming up with ways of organizing countries, clans, tribes, um, civil administration, you know, as, as we become more modern, we became more modern. And why is it important to understand these, uh, these notions of Gaia humanism is because we are able to identify our, we are able to understand how we, not just how we're wrong, how we make mistakes in our in our, in our inventing uh, structure, social structure, but we can see what it does um, and where it hurts and what it generates as far as harm. Um, and so what I want to say basically is that all of us, all human beings, uh, seek each other and are aware of each other as the first most important reference that we all have. When we are thrown to another country, um, alone or with our family or whatever, we, we, we see and we seek and we recognize and we seek to bond and we look to establish relationships with another human being. We are not first looking for a kind of human being, a, a race, a, an appearance, or a language. The most important thing for us first is to see another one of us. And from that first initial, most important, fundamental, always perpetual starting point of all organization that would be a social, would, be, would become social order or will become social, social order uh, in whatever, however our life changes or where, wherever we go, we will later add to that. We will later, um, you know, once we are among people, uh, oh, okay, well, I find myself more comfortable with uh, people that speak my language, or I'm more attracted to girls that look like this, or guys that look like that, or, or I'm, you know, I'm interested in people who are educated, professional, and have a lot of intelligent things to say, and, and I, I'm more attracted to people who are just, you know, uh, uh, light and having fun and enjoying and being creative or what have you, you know, everything else will start becoming like bubbles, will start becoming clans or tribes from that. But it's important to understand that we need to um, be thankful and honor and be uh, and, and uh, use it as a, as a, how can I say this, as a, a, a something to grip onto, something to be able to uh, um, fasten our way of analyzing our, our behavior and our inventions in so far as whether they're right, if they're wrong, if they're helping or if they're harming by f seeing and understanding that order. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is since we already have built in without needing to do anything about it a pull to want to be one to always seek first a human being to find it most important above anything 
to be with other people and to find a mate maybe or uh, you know to surround ourselves by a group of people that constitute a society with children and elders and, and so these basic fundamental things that don't divide people but simply uh, create the the uh, the vision, the, 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 the living experience, the existential experience of the human collective is what we first care to see manifested. And when things encroach on that, because we be our lesser nature or, you know, our selfishness, uh, as, as soon as we get comfortable with... Uh, you know, with things, it's like when everybody's hungry, for example, when there's famine, uh, not famine, I wouldn't say famine, people are becoming a little, you know, uh, but when there's, when, when food is tough or when it's a daily endeavor, when it's something that is very important in a culture and a society, um, we don't take it for granted and it is when we share it, right? And um, when we are, barely have enough to be happy and, and, and make ends meet and arrive to the end of the day, our tendency to honor that collective, that f always present first calling to our, uh, um, our uh, is, is at its best. It's, it's when we're the most, the, the, the nicest, <laughs> when we're the best with one another. As soon as we get too comfortable, we have we have a lot of things. We have excesses. We uh, want our other parts of our other parts of our nature start coming in, and we maybe want to be extra safe, extra secure. Uh, we may hoard. We may uh, start planning. You know, well now that I have extra, I'm gonna really take care of only my children, and I start forgetting about the kids of other people. Or I start forget. I start. I start forgetting about uh, my neighbors or what have you, because now we don't have to worry about survival as much. And when um, when we become very, um, I, I don't want to go uh, off on a tangent here, but basically, by let, let me get back to the to the core of what I'm trying to get across here. By dividing society in, uh, in, in a, through a cultural thinking about ourselves in a country and categorizing our society in uh, people of color, whites or blacks or gays or lesbians or whatever, transsexuals and, and you know, or foreigners or, or this religion or that religion. Uh, what we're doing is we're adding a complication that is really not sought by, by the primal desire to be a, an integral collective, an, inter, an integral organic uh, life, um, how can I, um, uh, a, a life form, a collective life form, a, com, uh, a communi communal <laughs> life form, naturally communal life form. Uh, and we create like uh, a, an unnecessary, un unsought, un unrequ unrequited, unrequested stress, which we adapt to, or we may convince ourselves that it's necessary. Um, and so let's say, for example, that we create, okay, the neighborhood of Armenians, and then we the, the majority of Polish people are over here, and then there's uh, another group of whatever, of who, whoever over there, right? What we do is we start stimulating without meaning to, but just because we created a division and therefore we s sort of called attention to that first most important fundamental thing which is that we are one integral human collective and so you find a you find people among each group that yeah they've uh, maybe they are more comfortable because they all speak the same language and they they're progressing in all of the capacities of of human intelligence and complicated 
uh, civilization and what have you, and they're all because now they're working, they're more like-minded and what have you, and so they're able to do more things. But there's always people that are saying, wait, but I don't want to drift away too far from them. I, don't, I want to meet them. I want to learn their language. Uh, I want to see what they have to offer, or I'm going to take over there what, I, what, we, what we produce. Um, because there's that force in us that keeps always pulling. That's why I say it's the fundamental source, most important um, uh, structure that will never, will always fight being pulled apart, even though pulling apart is something that we do because of our complex, precocious uh, logic and anal analytical intelligence and, and and so we invent things and we we dare nature and and we push the envelope of what you know maybe the species did twenty thousand years ago but we never break that reference that keeps saying where are you going well you, you do you need to be spend the whole day in a car do you need to work all day in a factory I mean, do you really want to split people in all these categories and, uh, and and create this situation where you're always having to talk about are they equal, are they equal, when you are the one that created those differences in, in the first place? We were, we are equal, says the organic mind. We already are equal. Why are you thinking that way? And this is what American culture has done through social ideologies. Instead of by by simply looking past and not realizing that the most important thing is how we all treat one another, which is like what religions in, in a, kind of do, right? They don't they don't say, be, uh, you know, you be good to these people, but treat the Israelis that way and treat the uh, the whatever the Muslims that way. No, the the premises of all religions is one humanity. Although they have their things where they go, oh, well, you know, but if you don't practice the way we say, then, you know, you're not, you're straying, you're not. But really the, the, the truly humanist um, quest of spirituality, of morale, of human morality, of religions, is to first treat all of one another well, and that's uh, all of each other well and good and honorable and respectful and considerate and sensitive regardless of who you are right we all know this but what's happened is that now we're saying this is more important than that it's more important we think that we're gonna f we've identified a problem let's say in in in, in the demographic uh this what would be a demographic graphic description of our cities and then we've created the protagonists that are the ones that are, have been victimized, happen to be of a certain skin color or of a certain ethnic background. And without knowing it, we, we have made that the focus of our, of our problem solving. And so now when we start thinking, we don't say you have to treat your brother Asian well because he's a human being. We say you have to treat him well because he's Asian, and blacks have, you know, and and just the the re uh, rights, and they're still uh, blacks this or whites that, and and all of a sudden we lost our footing uh, on on maintaining our perspective from uh, on on being human above all, um, and. The fact that it's easier maybe to lash out at something that is visually obvious because of their ethnicity or because of their, their skin color or because of their height or because of how they sound when they speak should have never been, should have never taken over our, our, rational, our, our rationale. We have let it take, we have let it take over our rationale and we have sort of flipped it around and have put ourselves in a place that is harder to get out of. And this is what I always argue in, in, in a bunch of YouTube channels, uh, and I don't think anybody really gets it when I try to say, by you, for example, there's this one dude that's so funny. He's a, like a smart little 
guy of, I, of African descendants. I always, I, I always I make a point of saying a people of African descendants because one of the problems, I will get back to talk to him about him, uh, one of our problems is that we install, well, let me see how much time, oh shit, there's no time anywhere. Oh, 25 minutes, okay. Um, um, yeah, I watch this channel, this guy, the irrefutably always right dude, and he's always finding cases of, of uh, Karens and, and how black people, Karens acting out in general or, or African, uh, people of African descent, um, um, you know, getting abused, mistreated. And, and, and what I see in his channel it's that it's almost like he goes out to look for it. And I don't, I'm not saying anything about him. I'm not saying that he's mean, that he wants to punish white people or anything like that. I think that we've, in America, we've all gotten, become, um, we've all gotten indoctrinated to think that way. And just, just like this guy, you know, and I say, if you keep saying black, a person uh, being a noun, it's so easy for that to, immediately move forward and say, I'm the protagonist of, of your discussion of whatever you're trying to analyze and the group of people that are under my noun. And once everybody talks that way in America, we've, you know, the minute we started saying, uh, calling people nouns, it's like we condemned ourselves, condemned ourselves to uh, become less uh, articulate in speaking of one another as people. And, you know, and race is second. Um, Ace did, does the same thing. He he went to Argentina, and I I know Argentina. I I, I grew up there. I'm, you know, I I may not sound like uh, the kids now how they speak, but I'm practically Argentinian, and I know that when you when you live there, it's a completely different culture. You don't hear talk about different races or people or where they come from or throughout the day. It's that's American. That's that's how we are in America. We all day long we're talking about these this group and that people and the police and the, and the gays and the blah blah blah. And we're always talking about groups and how they treat each other and what they do to one another. Um, and I would imagine that other countries are even less so than Argentina. Uh, there are people, and people first, and when they talk about anything that's happening, um, you talk about the human um, transgressions, the human behavior, the human um, fortune, the human, whatever happens to that person's life, not because of what group they belong to, but because it happened to a human being, whatever it is that it happened. Uh, I always... I always think it would be so beautiful if we could be known, Americans, someday, as people that, you know, um, uh, that we talk about ourselves just for as being Americans. And when people uh, see us, they don't, they, one of the things they notice is that we talk to each other exactly the same. One of the things I noticed, um, and, and, and we group each other irrelevantly, maybe there's a whole bunch of only white people, but it doesn't mean anything, or a whole bunch of only. Now it's like, if you see a bunch of people of African descendants together, the first thing you think is, oh, they have a problem with white people, because that's what we're looking at. We see, what is, what is the group doing? Uh, we we think that way. We we notice that, and we can never get away from it. And we think that we're solving a problem, but we're only burying ourselves more into it because in it because we think as you know. Uh, and if you look at American society, you see it. You see it. African Americans, uh, you know, hang out with each other. Let's let's be honest. You have like token friends, oh, my white friend, you know, uh, and and the same thing with uh, Europeans or Caucasians or whatever. Um, and this is, you know, this subject is difficult to talk about, as you can see. Um, 
but it is it's it's substance its message is so important it's almost like if we don't somehow seize it with both hands we this you know the 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 the, the way a society educates itself wrongly is sort of like a tide that slowly rises and starts covering the first coastal streets people get used to it you know they move further inland or they they move to the second floor of their house and they allow the city to get flooded and then th that's like their new reality that's how things and you know nobody knew that if we could just see what was happening and make a line of a, a sandbag uh wall you know along the front of the city for 10 years uh it never would have gotten flooded you know we would have withstood that slow tide that buried our gardens um in uganda uh and and so how do how do you um how do you create that sandbag you know one there are simple things that you could start learning somehow as a society which is stop thinking of people in terms of what color their skin is whoever whoever or calling yourself something in terms of your skin color and it seems like uh almost a, a hostile uh demand but really that's where it's at that's exactly what keeps you know i'm, I'm not crazy i didn't come up with this I, I, um i remember actually several or at least a few one of them was more is morgan freeman um there's a rumor he died. A rumor he died. No, I don't, I don't know anymore if he's alive or, or dead. But I do remember that he said something. He tried to get it across. He said, "Why should I have? What? Should, why should we have a month to celebrate us?" See, by by saying African American Month, you're saying that group. That's but you're minoritize minoritizing people by saying they need help, they need to be acknowledged, they need to be respected. That's what I had against the the the, the uh, Black Lives Matter. And, and you know, people tr kind of get it intuitively and they want to react by saying all lives matter, which is, that is correct. Um, but if you're going to succeed in, 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 uh, in establishing that more correct point you have to go into it and say all lives matter because um not only african americans are being treated badly but the police are crazy they're beating everybody up and kicking everybody around and throwing people that that you know deserve maybe a year in jail for 30 years in jail they're crazy and everybody's getting treated that way um not just but when they restricted it to Black Lives Matter because of this that I'm trying to explain. It withdrew the observance from what our society is suffering by other people, what all our people are suffering by some people. It no longer became that and we no longer can talk about all the different ways in which we have become really mean to one another as a society and in institutions. Um, authoritative and mili militaristically authoritative and um, bossy and cruel in a bunch of ways that we could talk about and articulate in, in every little instance in ways that w we have gotten really mean as a society um, but we don't because now it's always that fight about black and white and black and white and so everybody's like taking sides Polarity is the worst thing that a society can do politically, socially, social ideologies, because when you lock yourself into a thinking of these against those or what is what did those do to these guys and you start thinking in binary polar, polar, polarized way, um, you it all becomes about the struggle or the fight or the competition or anything that requires uh you know to the engagement of two and all that you know that happens and and and, and <laughs> between those two and then people slowly start stop being intelligent about 
what is affecting all people and and what is the point of all of, of, of that being corrected because you don't see the we don't longer understand the the common the common surface on which we all exist whether we're in certain problems uh, or and within that there may be some sort of uh, confrontations between two but they're not you know what we're what we're doing is we're tending to in any, in any case that's but i wanted to i wanted to mention something that um yeah i'm really upset at ace because he had the opportunity he was right there he could have he could have noticed he could have noticed that the way they treated him was different they didn't look at him like i I gotta think something about you because you're African American. No, they probably went to him with curiosity and 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 you know the way Argentinians are uh, to when you know they're. Look, racism racism is not a thing, as such as an idea that exists in society. We have we will always notice things that are we we need to. We need to sort of organize our thoughts and we need to have things that stand out for us to structure our understanding of existence. And so we will always say, I like a blonde, <laughs> I like blonde girls or, you know, whatever, uh, people, African people, you know, I don't like saying black or uh, people of African descendants or what have you, or, you know, uh, you, there isn't really, if you think about it, we're not looking at the human species. Um, you know, and, and comfortable with how we are. And some people are very outstanding. Uh, and some people kind of look like other people and don't get and don't stand out so much. And some people are kind of somewhere in between or could be maybe the other group. But it's not what matters. And so even though there are things that stand out, even though we will always notice a really short person or a really skinny and tall person or what, or somebody with very bright blue eyes, you know, very big blue eyes, you know, everybody will know who you're talking about when you say the girl with the blue eyes. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, that shouldn't be what what starts the understanding about one another or, or the conversation or the, or the, um, the matters that have to do with one another. Uh, we need to, th we need to think about our behavior and how we treat one another and what we do, how we act, how we behave, what we say, as would any human being say, do, act, or behave. And that's where our mind needs to stay. Um, because if we start, uh, you know, there is a certain degree that will always kind of tend to be there. It's, it's like, you know, there's always a, a tendency that will, people will say, you know, uh, black because it stands out so much, but we have already started teaching, you know, when we saw that that could be, it's not that it's offensive in itself. It's that people, when people, when things aren't going well and you, you're upset at what, you know, your neighbors did or what y your, your friend did or something, it's human nature to want to be quick about violence or hostility or attack. And so you verbally look for ways to say, to wound or harm that person as a human being. You don't actually care that their skin is a different color, but because you blame them for what happens in their neighborhood or because um, a, a great number of, of these people happen to be criminals or poor compared to other neighborhoods where everybody is light skin color and educated, and you are upset about that human situation it, you know, not everybody can stop. It's a, a kind of, un, 
not so natural, not so spontaneous, to always be perfectly thinking in terms of the human condition, because we don't understand a lot of things, and we don't know exactly why that person never got an education and stayed in that neighborhood. So the fact that we resort to fast explanations to describe a situation based on what we see does not mean that we actually uh, mean it in a human sense about that person. We all know that it's the same human being inside them that I am and that you are and that everybody. We all know that. We all we can't help not knowing that because it's, it's ingrained in, the, in this, like I said in the beginning. But we have reasons for which we are quick with our tongue to say things that would be easily, uh, easily describe, you know, um, and we do it with everything. We do it with people who talk a lot. Uh, we do it with people who are too quiet. We talk it, we do it with people who, you know, we say the guy that never says anything or, you know, we're always looking for ways to describe quickly a human situation. That's what always matters to us. It's the human situation. And that's what somehow we need to relearn that. We need to remember because all we're doing is making it more difficult to resolve the human situations. Because once we protagonize the category of, of and you know, it's you can't categorize as easily somebody who talk, doesn't talk a lot or somebody who's fat or skinny or what have you, but or, or simply speaks a different language. But it's really hard to stop categorizing, you know, really outstanding characteristics. You know, like uh, people from high China, you know, really, really Asian or 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 of African descendants with no mixture at all uh, in, in their blood or or, you know, people from uh, natives without any mixture from Central America and a lot of Latin America. You know, it's when you, <laughs> they're all very mixed right now, but you can see there's a type of physiology that would have st stood out to the Spaniards and to the English when they got to the Americas a great deal, as much as, um, or when they got to Hawaii, for example, and they saw the Hawaiians and the Polynesians, as much as people that are really dark skin color. But as, um, so what I'm trying to say is, the problem is that when we make it about, um, you know, like what Ace, Ace could have described a person's journey, a saga, you know, facing so many ignorant people, he or she still managed to, you know, make a life, become a professional. And so he was uh, interviewing this person and one of the, one of the videos he made was about this person, Argentina, you know, but what he did instead, and so he could have added virtue, he could have talked about that one person's story that could have happened anywhere, but what he did is he made that story as, see, Argentina also has this problem. And that's why it was, it was you know, uh, kind of infuriating because he chose to look for, it's almost like saying if every barn has a nail or a, or a, um, um, we call it needle somewhere buried <laughs> in the barn, right? Uh, and if you have a barn that all, you know, has a lot of uh, needles and nails, okay, you will talk about the barn with the needle in the haystack, right? Uh, or with the needles in the haystack. But the where you never found a needle, although there's a, quite a few probably buried under the hay, nobody lives, nobody experiences, nobody uh, lives their life experience. And, and, and what I mean by nobody is the, the vast majority of that population of everything that made that culture and that society, their thinking, their, per, their cultural personality, and, and most of their history uh, about uh, 
having needles in their haystacks, you know, but he went and looked for the needle in the haystack to be able to say that that barn also has needles in the haystack. And that's what is unfortunate, is that America exports this way of uh, judging, you know, and I don't want to talk too much, I don't want to spill over to our, you know, our cheeky, insolent kind of way in which we think we can go to another country and 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 say they are robbers or they are racists and not even know them and not even speak their language, not having spent more than a few weeks there. Um, but it's unfortunate that he went looking for things that he wanted to build and find to make his videos, to monetize them thanks to our obsession with um you know gay issues or blacks uh injustice against blacks or what have you and went to look for that and m met people and you know there's people in Argentina that will that have also bought into the american story of, of fighting against racism you know um and also are seeming to f forgetting that they were treated a lot more like my neighbor people, my Argentinian uh, neighbors, you know, by everybody else, than they would have had they grown up in, you know, in some neighborhood of Philadelphia, some, you know, some uh, of Chicago or what have you, uh, always with the police treating you like you're, you know, like you're the, the enemy or the criminal and always the subject in the movies, it's always about the black and the white and, the, you know, that person certainly didn't grow up in that. They grew up in a place where, yeah, probably ran into another a human being, which for all of history is small-minded and, and rude and ignorant and decided to uh, have a, a, a let their prejudice uh, get the best of them. And maybe that per, that girl, you know, but it's also very interesting because he was, he was interviewing this girl and she said something about um, how they thought she was, people would treat her and uh, asked her for money because they were assuming that she was a prostitute. Um, and if you look at the way she produces, she produces, she, you know, big hair and big beautiful eyes and lipstick and everything. And you would think it's a caricature of what prostitutes will exaggerate I mean, you know, it's like, um, it really is about what you decide to, uh, to believe, ultimately. Because what is a prostitute? I mean, I've seen prostitutes without makeup on the street. And there are girls all over every city in, in the world that you would say, she's, she puts makeup on and dresses like a prostitute. So, there, it's, it's a nothing. It's a nothing. There's... What girl is a prostitute because of the way she, because she uses lipstick, because she has big hair, but she bought into that story, that narrative that she assumed, let's say that they asked her for money, maybe some idiot thought that she was maybe uh, uh, a, a prostitute, but that doesn't mean that she grew up in a country where, uh, all girls that look like her get treated like prostitutes. That's, but because she needed to believe in the in the story, sort of the American social uh, civil rights thing about uh, black people getting mistreated, um, she needed to. Uh, she needed herself before Ace ever got there to. Uh, start you know maybe she wanted to succeed and she went she studied law and so it it it, it um, enhanced her to believe also a success story that that uh, molded itself or paralleled you know the the thing the success uh of against the evil social forces that are you know but you know it's just it's really a shame and it's really unfortunate that we don't 
go to other countries, YouTubers. Some YouTubers do, a lot of YouTubers do, um, to look for things that we never, that are uh, goods that are goods that we never, uh, things that are good that we never would have expected to see in another country because we come from our own country. And, and really show the disbelief of how, or the beauty of how, let themselves be. There's a guy that does, um, there's, it tries to do that. It's not an easy thing to do, the Yes Theory uh, channel. Uh, but that's his concept, you know. He goes and he discovers things and he likes to see, look, look at what, look at how wonderful they are in other countries. We don't do that. Look at how they do, look at what they do here, you know, and that's what he builds. Okay, so a lot of it maybe is also his own construction, like aces. But he wants to do the opposite. He wants to do some. He wants to show how they're how they're the different ways is should be refreshing, sh refreshing, should open your eyes up, should open your heart to maybe seeing that we are small in our own little countries and we may be confined in our own little repetitious ways of understanding the world and look at how wonderful these people are unconditional and how they don't have all these uh, all these prejudices at, at all you know they just went and did that you know and ace could have done that in argentina it, it, precisely on the subject that he's interested in he could have shown um the differences i mean the the, the, the thing that people um can say this racism you know the the whole subject is not an easy thing to talk about but i'm going to conclude by comparing to trying to make an example of what i mean when i uh when i was growing up in argentina and i was a kid and then went to adolescence i was that culture i mean that was the whole culture i knew i mean i i spoke well english because i was in the states until i was seven but uh, and I would go back to visit my parents every year. And so I always kept, you know, um, sort of Americanized and getting refueled with Americanism in some, to some capacity. But really during those years of elementary school, I was becoming more and more Argentinian and it, you know, also very impressionable because of that age that when we're developing. And I know how Argentines are. I know that um they all call we all call each other and now see this is what's screwed about this that one culture is is coming in and changing something that was quite wonderful in my estimation and even argentinians themselves don't really know how to appreciate it how to how to how to en how to enhance it how to define it how to describe it it's almost like they're taking some a treasure away from them and they don't even see it. Um, people would call each other negro, flaca, eh, gordo, you know, fatty. Fl but when we say it in English, it sounds like a, 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 a disparaging adjective, right? But in Spanish, it's a way of just responding to what I see and how what I see is just what you are and it's okay. And you don't say that to somebody. You don't call them a hey, negro when you first meet them. But as soon as they're your friend, maybe even after only a couple of days, you will use these words to say, uh, I like you. Now I'm in, uh, we can trust each other. Uh, we're, fami unfam we're familiar with each other. And it becomes a term of affection, of endearment. All these words in Argentinian and most of Spanish, and all of Spanish, I think, actually, depending on how much they're being affected by new wave of, uh, of judgmentalness on, on how we speak to one another, are meant with affection, with, um, with endearment, you know? You know when you say whatever you call them jew or black or skinny or fat or or uh, russian <laughs> or polish uh they're usually often they get um, abbreviated and it's like a nickname and it has the uh 
the charge and the, the feeling and the sentiment of a nickname. Um, and, and as such, when people are angry and they go, Negro de mierda, they don't even put, uh, you know, fucking blacky or however you can translate that. They don't even mean it uh, in a in a mean, disparaging way, like you would imagine the translation of being calling somebody fucking black because you're angry at them. All of a sudden, it's like, oh my god, slavery came back overnight. You know, in that very instant. Uh, no, that's not at all how they mean it, even when they're angry, right? And so, this was just how life and culture and society and how people spoke and everybody was Argentinian. They weren't, they weren't Mapuches and stuff, you know. People knew that they had Indian blood, but the, the, the whole like Mapuche thing that is now the, going on in Chile and Argentina is a new arrival. <laughs> it wasn't before there, you know, there are, Yes, there were areas of poverty, and especially in Argentina, you go to a poor area of Corrientes or Santiago del Estero, and they're, they look German sometimes, you know, and they're like, they don't have any, they don't have food on their plate. Um, and so that reality, that sentiment, that cultural sentiment of, 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 uh, of experiencing reality was the same. In this, in southern in pa Patagonia, but because this got exported, a, a political way of thinking about society and your rights and your human rights and the individual rights, and it all of a sudden people felt, hey, I can, I can say I'm a Mapuche and I have power because now I can call in justice against, uh, well, you know, whoever's in authority. <laughs> you know, it was the people who died already who did whatever to my grandparents. But now we can take this structure and blame somebody and empower ourselves and say we have the right to steal land. And, and all this stuff that is happening now is because of the uh, this invasion of a different way of looking at society that descended upon Latin America. With, through people like Ace, through channels and movies, and 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 that ruined what before were was had a better chance actually, you see, of of whatever suffering was going on among whoever to be healed and solved and resolved in the country, because the problems were human, because it was. Uh, the resources and the wealth or the education wasn't reaching areas that, yeah, they were like the, the places where the Europeans didn't care so much to, uh, to extend their society and all their institutions. And so and it just so happens that they were, uh, you know, and, but in, instead of seeing the, the human struggle where trying to explain it through grouping categories. And that is just creating um, animosity, animosity and confrontations. And it's, it's, it's funny because in the name of ending segregation, we're creating more segregation. And we don't see that in America. We still believe we need to print forms that say, you know, check the box of where, you know, where, what you are. Are you Vietnamese? Are you Latino? Are you, let's, Latino could be Hispanic Latino, it could be Indian Latino. It's like, all our thoughts and all our thinking goes into grouping each other instead of living together as one, as one culture, one society. We are one society. Why don't we embrace it? We will all watch the same movies and go eat at McDonald's. You know, we <laughs> kind of have the same problems in our family. And uh, we should be, we have a lot to, that already makes us one, and, and, but we don't deal with those problems that we could be improving, like our diet and not eating so much McDonald's, because we're too preoccupied with this positioning and 
the dynamics and what to do and how to fix this problem, more rights, more laws, more... It's a way of thinking that is not allowing us to see the humanity of our collective. We, like homosexuality is the same thing. Where am I? Almost a minute, almost an hour. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, homosexuality is just an expression of human sexuality. It can happen if you just go and have sex with the same gender. Anybody can do it. It's some, something human sexuality can do, and it's been around since ever. And uh, and there's there are reasons that we have stopped wanting to understand why it is more soothing or attractive or healing or compensating or necessary or however you want to call those forces that make some people not want to stop looking there and uh, and not just have it be a thought that you you know you <laughs> you passed around your brain for a while and then touch it touched something that said no no that's not going to feel good and you moved on with your regular no instead uh, some people say oh wait something about that keeps telling me you know and so they start wanting to an experience and so forth and but that doesn't mean that some people are sort of railed that way by evolution and natural des the design of the human body or, or human sexuality and others are not. It needs to be understood why it happens in society, why some people develop it. Is it how much of it happens biologically before birth and how much of it actually what we're what we're sh wanting to shut everybody up about, which is absolutely uh, a fact, a lot of it happens in many people after birth because of the way you were treated, because of how you were treated, you know, not necessarily badly. It could be uh, that you were given everything and, and, and maybe just a detachment or a coldness made you feel like you couldn't relate to one of your parents. I mean, there are things that we just stopped caring, why you didn't want to understand anymore. We just, let's fix this. Let's just make two categories. We don't have to worry ourselves about, and most of all, we don't have to worry to, we don't have to think about whether we're doing something wrong as a, as a society, as governments and institutions. Are we being too, are our laws being too uh, destructive of family, of respect and honor among family members, our, our institutions and our way of thinking about life, sort of uh, weakening the the bond and the, re, uh, the respect among family members, or making it all about what you can have and where you can, how you can run off to become richer or more powerful or, or freer than the rest of you. And no, we're not... Uh, uh, nurturing a sense of responsibility and duty towards the family, towards the grandparents, towards the children. And so are we maybe to have some responsibility into why people are coming out like still needing more from their same gender, their formative gender. So if you're the, the dad in the case of males and both parents contribute to the development of each one of us, but you know, we just decided to not look at it through nature anymore, through biology, and, and, and because even though human sexuality is a, a biological function, we've decided that homosexuality is not a biological function. It's something that needs to be sort of obsessively analyzed through intellectual ideology and governed and administrated, organized that way, and it's no longer about something that human physiology expresses. Um, and by separating people and those that are and those that are not, uh, we alleviated a lot of the difficulty and the emotional difficulty. It has always been harder for men, uh, naturally has always been harder for men, so there's always a tendency to want to not want to look at, but I think I look at it and just really just dismiss somebody as having been born that way. That's always been like that. But it's not our higher self that does that. It's our lesser self that does that. Um, and we've decided to take the go in the direction of the lesser self, except that we call it a science and a 
civil social ideology. But in any case, um, yeah, uh, we somehow we need to learn, relearn to put back the human collective, the single human being at the starting base of everything that we later understand socially as plausibly anybody potentially potentially having uh, been able to be affected the same way or having been uh, conditioned or suggested the same way as any as it, it has happened to anyone else because what we're doing now is that we're seeing because he's this or because he was born that way or because he came from that place or because his skin color is out and so the circums the we the we turned it around instead of the the person creating the circumstance we're now letting the circumstance create the person or instead of the person governing or understanding and seeing the 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 circumstance we're making it so that the circumstance tells what said tells what the person has to do what they should think what should be done to that person uh, because they're black or because they're gay instead of a human being that uh, has for all the human reasons so social human reasons that anybody could live through is living that life or is being affected by these social conditions um yeah that's how we need to turn it around but i have no idea how i have no clue I, I wouldn't know how to write, uh, uh, give a seminar, for example, uh, that, that beautifully in, 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 in half an hour before you would get the concept clearly that in a way that manifests strongly uh, in, uh, in those who understand it. Um, I, I just kind of s struggle with it, as you can see, but well, anyways, thanks for listening. And I'm sorry, Ace, uh, if I insult and was mean to you. Um, <laughs> anyways. Um, did show some nice things. I'm not going to say that everything was mean and insulting and offensive. Um, but really, you know, I think uh, we need to be a little more careful when we use the internet to talk about other people's countries um, and you know because people uh, hold dearly to their culture and their their people their history their language and when somebody comes and says oh you are about this and you are all about that um, it's very wounding it's very hurtful uh, belittling arrogant, um, you know, presumptuous, condescending, um, you know, so anyways, that's that. Arrivederci.